Hello everyone. My name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. So 2025 has almost come to an end. Honestly, 2025 has been a year of uncertainty, especially for the job seekers, uncertainty about the market, uncertainty about the openings, AI tools coming into picture, companies laying off engineers. I personally know a lot of people who quit their learning journey because of these uncertainties. So what you should do in 2026? Should you stop your learning journey? To be honest, if you follow a structured roadmap, if you follow things in order, you can still make it to DevOps and cloud in 2026. In this video, I will share a very clear roadmap that you can follow and I'll also answer your questions about certifications, practical learning. So just make sure you watch this video till the end. Let's get started. Perfect. So if you want to learn DevOps and cloud, I would recommend this roadmap. Start with understanding the scope of DevOps, what exactly DevOps means next to. Because without understanding this, you will find the next steps difficult. Then head to Linux. Most of the world today runs on Linux, so it is important to understand the fundamentals of Linux. Then move on to networking. If you join as a DevOps or cloud engineer, you will be asked to debug and troubleshoot issues. Trust me, most of the issues would boil down to networking. So you should understand networking. Then focus on Git version control system. I would say go with GitHub at this point of time. So master GitHub, understand how versioning works in real time. Then focus on shell scripting. You should at least be able to write basic shell scripts to automate your day to day activities. After all this, focus on fundamentals of Ansible as well as Terraform. You don't have to master them at this point of your journey. I'll tell you when you should master Ansible and Terraform. After this, focus on containers, understand what are containers, how they solve the modern problems and use Docker as container platform. So you should also understand how to manage entire container lifecycle using Docker. Then head to the most important part of your DevOps journey, that is Kubernetes. So Kubernetes is the most important skill that you should have. At least learn the Kubernetes concepts like pods, services, ingress, load balancing, custom resource definition, and how Kubernetes architecture as well as networking works. Finally, learn CI/CD. Lot of people learn CI/CD at the early stages of their DevOps journey, but it is a big mistake. CI/CD involves most of these concepts, so basically learn CI/CD once you master all of these concepts. So this becomes the first part of your journey, and all of this is covered in our DevOps Zero to Hero as well as Linux Zero to Hero playlist. Then head to the second part of your journey, that is master cloud platform. Till now, do everything on your local machine and understand all the concepts on your local environment. Now it's time to master cloud. You can pick up AWS or Azure and just learn all of these things through the AWS services. For example, learn virtual machines using AWS EC2 instances. Learn. Networking using AWS VPC, learn containers using AWS ECR, learn Kubernetes using Amazon EKS. So all that you have to do is to identify the relevant services and master those services on the cloud platform. I have covered these concepts in AWS Zero to Hero as well as Azure Zero to Hero. Now head to the most interesting part of your journey, that is infrastructure as code. At this point of time, master Terraform. So, as I told you in the beginning of your journey, just learn the fundamentals of Terraform. But here, now that you already know cloud platform and you know the fundamentals of DevOps, focus on automating infrastructure on the cloud platform. That is, automate services and manage infrastructure lifecycle using Terraform. Finally, you need a programming language. Shell scripting is good enough, but you need another programming language for automating high level activities 
I would recommend Python. And this is covered in our Python Zero to Hero playlist. So overall, go with this roadmap, DevOps Zero to Hero, AWS or Azure Zero to Hero, Terraform Zero to Hero, finally Python for DevOps. Now after all this, people usually ask me, Abhishek, I explored all the courses on the channel. I implemented things that you explained. Now I'm looking for more practical hands-on. You know, I started giving the interviews, so I need more real-time use cases. This is where I recommend platform like CodeCloud. I mean, if you're new, CodeCloud is a DevOps training platform and they have real-time practical hands-on on almost all the DevOps use cases. Let me quickly show you the platform. So this is a platform. If you're interested in building, breaking, fixing and learning things using their practical hands-on labs, you can just sign up and create an account. I'll share the link in the description using which you can create an account. The main reason for recommending their platform is because of their beginner friendly learning paths. Let's say someone wants to master Kubernetes. They can head to their Kubernetes learning path. Within the learning path, they can find all the courses related to Kubernetes and wherever required, they will also find practical hands-on labs. Let's take this one, Kubernetes for beginners. So here you will not only find the concepts of Kubernetes, but for each concept, again, wherever required, they also have curated hands-on lab. So this is the concept of container and a lab environment to familiarize with containers. This is a lab environment for pods. This is a lab environment for YAML. And it's also very simple. You just have to click on the lab environment. A Kubernetes cluster is set up for you. As simple as this. Now I have the lab environment. I can just practice the indentation of YAML or I can get familiarized with YAML. Let's say I don't want to use the hands-on lab for a particular scenario. I just want to implement a project. You can also do that. They have playgrounds. Let's say you need a multi-node Kubernetes cluster. Just head to the playground, click on multi-node Kubernetes cluster. Just like the same way, you will get a multi-node Kubernetes cluster. You don't have to set up AWS account or you don't have to provide your credentials. Just by clicking on launch now, you will have a multi-node Kubernetes cluster set up for you. There you go. If I run kubectl get nodes you will see multiple nodes so the control plane of kubernetes and worker nodes of kubernetes not only kubernetes one can use their platform to master terraform master linux docker as i told you any concept in the space of devops and cloud along with learning if you are looking for challenges if you want to implement a devops task per day and track your learning they also did something called 100 days of devops so you can go through their 100 days of DevOps challenge where each day you can work on a micro task related to DevOps. And these micro tasks are actually curated in a way where you get a feel of working in a corporate environment. So you get to learn DevOps by working on a scenario that is curated by them. So you can head to their 100 days of DevOps challenge and click on the start now where you have the board created for you. For example, I completed one task out of the 100 tasks. So this way you can also track your progress and you can challenge yourself while preparing for the interviews. Now, most importantly, CodeCloud is also running up to 50% sale as part of their Black Friday sale. So if you're planning to get an account with CodeCloud or if you're planning to do practical hands-on labs with CodeCloud, I feel this is the perfect time so that you can also get up to 50% off on your purchases. I'll share this link as well in the description so that you can grab your Black Friday offer. Okay, Abhishek, this is about practical hands-on lab and learning. What about certifications? Now, my take on certifications is little different. Personally, I would not recommend going with cloud-related certifications, at least in 2025, because they don't add a lot of value until there is a client requirement. However, I would definitely recommend some Kubernetes certifications. So the ones that I would recommend are CKA, CKAD, and CKS. To be honest, 
with my experience and from what I see in the market, these are the only certificates that add value to your resume. The reason is simple. These certifications are completely practical hands-on, unlike the cloud certifications. So if at all you want to go with certifications, I would say go with Kubernetes related certifications. Unfortunately, I haven't recorded any certification related courses on our channel, but if you want to get a certification, CodeCloud has a very good learning path for certification as well. Uh, you can just head to CKA for example. So this is their CKA certification learning path. Similarly, they have a CKAD, CKS as well. A lot of people go through code cloud certification courses because they are very structured and also they offer hands-on labs for these certifications. If you are interested in Kubestronaut, code cloud platform also has all the certifications related to Kubestronaut program. So this is how you prepare for certifications as well. I hope this roadmap video covers all your questions and I hope you got good clarity on how to prepare for DevOps and cloud roles in 2025, 2026. Once again, Code Cloud is running their Black Friday sale. You can get up to 50% off on their courses as well as practical hands-on labs. I'll share the link in the description. Make sure you go through it. So that's all for today's video. In case you feel I missed something, do let me know in the comment section. More than happy to get back to you on it. See you all in the next video. Take care.